For this week, we will continue our discussion on volcanoes. If you want to learn more about this, make sure to watch this video. Hi, this is Sir Eman, a public school science teacher. In the previous video, we have defined what a volcano is and identified its parts. We were as well able to describe the different types of volcano and volcanic eruptions. We also did explain what happens when volcanoes erupt. In this video, we will learn more about volcanoes. In here, we will explain the advantages and disadvantages of volcanic eruptions. We will as well illustrate how energy from volcanoes may be tapped for human use. This is based on the 15th most essential learning competency in Science 9, which is illustrate how energy from volcanoes may be tapped for human use. Let's begin. Whenever we hear about a volcanic eruption, we probably think of a disaster, calamity, or any other negative thing related to it. Well, definitely, we perceive this event as something that is frightening or terrifying. Well, volcanic eruptions actually have both advantages and disadvantages. And this is the first thing that we will discuss. Well, for sure, it's much easier for us to think of its disadvantages or negative effects. So let's have this first. Can you think of the negative effects or disadvantages of volcanic eruptions? You can write down your thoughts in a piece of paper. Uh, pwede niyong isulat dyan ang inyong mga sagot. Ano? I'm going to give you some time. Uh, you can pause this video at this point and then play it again once you have already written your, your answers. Okay? So let's see. Let's find out if what you have written are the same as the ones we have in the presentation. Let's have the first disadvantage of volcanic eruption. So first is the occurrence of what we call lahar. So what is a lahar? Basically, a lahar is a violent type of mud flow. So this is not a simple mud flow, but rather a violent type of mud flow or debris flow that is composed of a slurry of pyroclastic material. Basically, the different materials that come out of a volcano during volcanic eruption, rocky debris, and take note, water. Okay. Now, this material flows down from a volcano, typically along a river valley. So this is different from the lava flow, ano, yung pag-flow mismo ng lava or molten rock for, uh, out of the crater. This is the flow of these different materials together with water. So what triggers this uh, lahar? So this is triggered by melting snow and ice or by ejecting water from a crater lake. So uh, sa taas ng volcano, sa malalamig na lugar, pwedeng meron doon mga ice, uh, pwedeng cover siya ng snow. So because of the volcanic uh, activity, magme-melt yung, yung snow na yun, turning that into uh, water. So, syempre, after ng volcanic eruption, dun sa slope ng volcano, meron dyan nag-settle ng mga uh, pyroclastic material, mga rocky debris. Kapag nag-turn uh, into liquid, into water yung snow na yun, so sasama yung mag-flow pa pa pa. Okay? Magkakaroon itong violent na mud flow na ito. Another uh, um, event that may trigger this uh, type of violent mud flow would be rainfall. Pagkatapos ng, pag, ng eruption, umula ng malakas, so madadala ang mga materials na yan pababa dun sa mga surrounding regions or areas ng volcano. Okay? Uh, that is exactly what happened during Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991. Okay? So the eruption resulted in volcanic ash and rock fragments being deposited on the volcano slope. However, Within hours, uh, heavy rains began to wash this material down into the surrounding lowlands in giant, fast-moving lahars. And as you can see, this has been the result of that uh, lahar uh, pagkatapos noong pag-ulan. Ano, nalubog yung mga uh, structures at nasira yung, yung mga lugar sa paligid nitong Mount Pinatubo. So this is something that really affects negatively the environment surrounding the volcano aside from your lava flow. Okay? So in fact, over the next four uh, rainy seasons, Lahar carried about half of the deposits of the volcano causing even more destructions. Okay? So this is the first disadvantage of volcanic eruption. Second would be what we call uh, Nui Ardente. Okay? So, ano yung anong ibig sabihin nito? So, itong Nui Ardente basically are clouds of hot ash and poisonous gases that are ejected 
from a volcano. Alam natin, nag eject naman talaga nitong mga different gases nitong volcano during volcanic eruption. Pero typically, yung uh, mushroom cloud of gas pataas, itong uh, New Year Dente na to, this is different. Kasi uh, ito naman, pababa yung flow. Okay? Kanina, di ba, flow of pyroclastic material with water. This one yung nag-flow, yung mainit na gases and ash. That's why this is also referred to as blowing avalanche. If you're familiar with avalanche, with, which uh, transpires in places na may snow, sa mga uh, mountains ano, na covered with snow, kapag yun ay nag-flow uh, rapidly, pababa, yun yung avalanche na tinatawag. But in this case, maybe ardente, it's not snow na nag-flow uh, rapidly, pababa, but rather yung cloud of hot ash and poisonous gases. So, syempre, ano mangyayari dun sa mga madadaanan itong uh, mainit na gases na ito at ash? Matutubo kayo, masusunog. So, again, that results to damages in the surroundings near the volcano. Kaya, that actually leads us to the third uh, disadvantage of volcanic eruptions, which is damage to property. So, lahat ito, lava flow, yung dalawa na bagay kanina, damages the uh, properties uh, be it yung mga sasakyan, structures, bahay, buildings, at iba pa sa paligid ng volcano. This, these are some of the pictures of the af aftermath of um, Taal Volcano eruption last year. Ito nyo, sira yung bahay, ano? yung mga halaman, mga puno sa paligid, sira rin yung mga sasakyan, puro mga natabunan, itong mga ash. Okay? So this time, let's proceed with the fourth disadvantage or negative effect of volcanic eruption. We have effects or adverse effects on the environment. So how does this uh, volcanic eruption negatively affect the environment? So first, clouds of ash, dust, and gas may reduce uh, global temperatures by several degrees. So paano nangyayari yun? Siyempre, because of the emission of this ash and dust, nagko-cover din yun sa surface ng Earth, blocking the sunlight, ano? resulting to in decrease in global average temperature. Kasabay nung itong mga ash, dust, and other materials, nakakapag-emit din ito ng mga gases, harmful gases, which adds to the greenhouse gases natin sa, sa ating atmosphere. Okay? Now, the emission of sulfur dioxide, one of those uh, harmful gases that I mentioned a while ago, this may lead to acid rain. Itong acid rain na ito is very harmful because this negatively affects human health. This may result to respiratory diseases. Ano? It also may harm forests, as you can see on the picture on the screen, even bodies of water, uh, buildings, and infrastructures. So lastly, ito yung pinakaayaw naman natin. Ano? Uh, of course, with every volcanic eruption, may kasamang loss of life, uh, as you can see on the pictures on the screen. Okay? So, in fact, dito sa nakalipas na eruption dito sa atin, sa Taal, there were 39 ano, na namatay uh, because of the eruption. Ito, mostly ito mga to, uh, they refused to evacuate ng time na mahina pa yung eruption. Kaya nung naturo na nung malakas na eruption, kaya sila nakalikas at kaya sila namatay. Okay? So, these are just some of the, this five that I've given, these are just some of the uh, disadvantages of volcanic eruptions. In general, ito yung mga negative effects. Ano, but probably, meron pang iba. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the advantages. Meron nga bang advantage itong uh, disaster na ito? Meron bang magandang na naidudulot ito? Palagay nyo. Say nga, uh, I'm going to give you some time. You can again write your thoughts on uh, a paper, pwede scratch paper. Uh, magbigay kayo siguro ng tatlo na advantages na palagay nyo nagiging resulta ng uh, volcanic eruption. Sige, pwede nyo i-pause and then mamaya pag natapos na kayo, pwede nyo i-play ulit. Okay? Okay, pagpatuloy natin. Ano? So, let's have the first advantage of volcanic eruption. First would be fertile soil. So, basically, yung volcanic eruption nag-result siya na maging fertile, mataba yung lupa sa paligid noong volcano. Well, volcanic soils are very fertile. So, meaning to say, plants, uh, fruits, ng mga trees, they're easy to grow in this soil. Okay? These rich soils are called uh, laterite soils and are rich in minerals. This is actually the reason why they are fertile because of the abundance of these minerals from the interior of the earth which are actually needed by the plants. They are common in many countries such as Brazil where coffee is grown and parts of southern Italy where fruits and vegetables are grown. And even the Philippines in areas near volcanoes, mayotaba yung mga lupa na Okay? 
So that's the first advantage or positive effect of volcanic eruption. Next would be uh, tourism. It affects tourism positively. So paano? Many dormant and even active volcanoes attract hundreds of thousands of tourists each year. Alam natin yan, ano? Kapag uh, pumunta ng biko lang isa, hindi maaaring hindi papasya sa mayon. At picture doon sa view nakita yung mayon volcano. We usually go to Tagaytay, ano? Hindi lang dahil malamig yung 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 temperature doon, kundi gusto natin makita yung beautiful, uh, magnificent, sa, sa, sabi nga nila, Taal Volcano, yung magandang scenery doon. At yung iba, nagtetrek pa pataas ng uh, crater ng Mount Pinatubo. So definitely, regardless of whether dormant or active, kahit pa active yung mga volcanoes na yan, they attract tourists. In turn, dahil maraming pumupunta, this leads to many spin-off industries such, such as uh, bus companies, restaurants, shops, and hotels. And this generates a lot of employment. Okay? That's another advantage of uh, volcanic eruptions. Third, creation of new land. Okay? So, volcanoes can create new land for human habitation. For example, Iceland. Now, this Iceland is actually full of landscapes which are molded and shaped by continuous volcanic activities. Now, mostly, itong mga nagkikreate ng new, new land na ito, mga island na yan, these are the ones which are underwater, yung mga submarine volcanoes. Ano? Fourth would be building material. So, this different uh, volcanic activity, they result to the formation of this uh, specific uh, materials which are useful for construction. Say, for instance, the one shown on the picture would be granite. Alam natin ginagamit sa construction, paggagawa ng mga kitchen countertop at iba pang mga lugar sa bahay. Ano niya, lagyan ng ganitong mga materials. And lastly, you have geothermal energy. So basically, this geothermal energy is the heat from volcanoes which uh, is being tapped for different human activities and use. Now, we will discuss this further in the next section of our uh, discussion. Okay? So, these are the major advantages or positive effects of volcanic eruptions. Again, there may be some other positive effects, pero ito yung mga general, ano, na mabubuting na edudulot ng volcanic eruptions. Well, if this um, volcanic, I mean, advantages of volcanic eruption outweigh the disadvantages, well, that's for each and every one of us to judge or decide. Now, this time, let's have the second part of our discussion, geothermal energy. So what is geothermal energy? Well, the word geothermal comes from the Greek words geo, which means earth, and therme, which means heat. So basically, geothermal energy is the heat within the earth. Now, this is considered to be a renewable energy source because uh, this heat is continuously produced inside of the earth. So it does not get easily depleted. Ano? Patuloy dire diretso siya na na po produce uh, within the Earth's interior. Now, there are two ways by which people capture this geothermal energy or, or this heat from the Earth's interior. That is uh, through what we call geothermal power plants and second would be through what we call geothermal heat pumps. So, ano ba yung pinagkaiba nitong dalawang ito? When we speak of geothermal power plants, it uses heat from deep inside the earth to generate steam and turn that steam into electricity for different purposes. Ano? Para mga gadgets, devices, din pong mga gamit sa bahay, ano? and different activities. Whereas ito namang geothermal heat pumps, uh, it taps into the heat close to the earth's surface to heat water or provide heat for buildings and vice versa. Pwede rin pang cool down ng mga building. So, for geothermal power plant, it's um, large scale. I know it, it, what it does is basically to turn that heat into steam and then convert that into electricity. Whereas for heat pump naman, more on yung heat mismo ang, ang pinapakinabangan ano, for heating purposes. At uh, usually sa mga household lang, sa mga buildings. Ano, hindi katulad nito isa na mas large scale. Okay, now let's focus this time on geothermal power plants. These are some uh, pictures of geothermal power plants. And this one, an illustration showing how um, geothermal power plants work. Okay, so 
At a geothermal power plant, wells are drilled one or two miles deep into the earth okay, to pump steam or hot water to the surface. Now, these power plants are found in areas with a lot of hot springs, geysers, or volcanic activity where the earth is particularly hot just below the surface. So, yung mga lugar din naman nalapit sa mga volcano. Ano? So, paano ba nag-work? Paano na co-convert itong steam into electricity na nagagamit ng mga, ng mga lugar sa paligid niya? So, first, as you can see in the illustration, yung may label na one, hot water is pumped from deep underground through a well under high pressure. Okay? So, pinapump yung mainda tubig na galing sa ilalim, pataas. What will happen next? You see there, number two, when the water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped. So, pinapababa, binaba, pinapababa na yung pressure. And this will result to the hot water turning into steam or gas. Okay? So, yung hot water that's going to turn into steam or gas or water vapor. Okay? Now, third, you see here, this leads us to the turbine and generator. This steam, this gas, spins a turbine. So, meron dyan parang malaking electric, parang LSE. Ano? Because of the movement ng steam, ng gas, iikot niya ng mabilis. Okay? Now, that turbine is connected to a generator. So, generator that generates electricity. So, yung, yung steam that's going to spin the turbine, so, mechanical energy, may movement, Connected yung turbine na yun dun sa generator, specifically sa rotor, yung own generator, and that's going to, to convert that mechanical energy into electricity. No, electrical energy. So, doon produce yung electricity. Kaya makikita dito, connected siya sa mga tower, and then power lines, diretso dun sa mga, papunta dun sa mga gagamit. No? Okay? So, mula dun sa iyong uh, heat, ano, convert into steam, and then into electricity. Now, what will happen next? Ano mangyayari doon sa steam na yun? So, fourth, pagkakas yung meta dito yung cooling tower. Ano? The steam cools off in a cooling tower. So, because the temperature decreases, that's going to turn, uh, that steam is going to condense, turn in, to turn back into water. So, from gas, that's going to turn back again into water. And then fifth, through injection well, that's going to, that cold water will be pumped back into the earth to begin the process again. So, malamig na yung tubig, mababa na yung temperature, Mainit dun sa baba, iinit ulit yon, ipapump ulit pa taas, ito turn into steam, papaikutin yung turbine connected to generator, mag-generate electricity, papadala na sa mga household o kung saan man, and then kukul yung tubig, ipapadala yung baba. And then the cycle, uh, again, happens over and over again. Okay? So, ganoon nangyayari yung pag-generate ng electricity through geothermal power plant. Okay? So, hopefully, malinaw. Ano? Kung may part na hindi malinaw, pwede niyong balikan ulit mamaya yung other explanation doon. Now, this time, let's proceed with uh, geothermal heat pump. Ano naman ang nangyayari dito? So, these are some of the pictures of a geothermal heat pump installation ano, ng, ng geothermal heat pump and illustration showing how this geothermal heat pump works. Okay, so geothermal heat pumps can do all sorts of things from heating and cooling homes to even warming uh, swimming pools. Now, this uh, systems transfer heat by pumping water or refrigerants. This is a special type of fluid through pipes just below the Earth's surface where the temperature is a constant 50 to 60 degrees. So, meron kang water or refrigerant ang tawag, special type of fluid na continuously nagpo-flow sa pipe na sabi dito ay nakabaon sa Earth's surface with this temperature. I know, 50 to 60 degrees in temperature dun sa baba. Okay? Now, during winter, the water or refrigerant absorbs warm from the earth and then pump that upward, pataas dun sa bahay, uh, and brings this heat to the above building. Whereas, during summer naman, the, this uh, heat pumps can run in reverse and help cool the building. So, mamaya tingnan natin yun as we examine this illustration. So, paano nga ba nangyayari yun? So, dito sa left side nitong ating illustration, makita niyo yung ating mga labeled na mga parts. So, for the first, water or a refrigerant move through a loop of pipes. Makita niyo, loop siya, ano, closed yung circuit, dire-diretso yung pag-flow ng liquid na nasa loob. Okay? So, meron dyang uh, either water or special type of fluid. So, second, 
uh, when it is cold, the water heats up. So, um, pag malamig dun sa taas, ano? So, syempre, sa ilalim, mainit, yung tubig na nandun will also increase in temperature. Now, as it travels through the part of the loop that is buried underground, so yung nakalubog, hindi, syempre, iinit yung tubig na nandun. Once it gets back above ground, the warmed water or refrigerant transfer the heat into the building. So, mainit yung yung refrigerant or yung water, uh, mas mababa naman yung temperature ng, ng loob ng, ng, uh, ng building or ng bahay. So, a movement kasi ng heat would be from area with high temperature to area of lower temperature. So, mula dun sa refrigerant, magta-transfer yung heat papunta dun sa loob ng bahay. Now, after this, kapag nag-give off niya na yung heat, the water cools down and it is again pumped back underground, starting the process again. Parang tulad nung kanina. Ano? Wala lang dito, uh, hindi, hindi siya connected dun sa uh, turbine at saka pati sa generator para mag-generate electricity. Ito directly ginagamit yung heat sa ilalim to heat the structure, ano, yung building or yung bahay. Okay? Uh, this time, let's proceed with the second half of the illustration yung nasa right naman. So, ano nangyayari during a hot day? So, the system can run in reverse. So, the water or refrigerant pulls the building. So, yung mainit sa loob. Ano? So, yung refrigerant naman, tumutulong siya para mapalamig in temperature, makababay temperature sa loob ng building or ng bahay sa pamagitan ng pag-absorb ng init na yon. Okay? Kapag na-absorb niya ng init, that's going to be pumped underground where the extra heat is to be transferred to the ground. Hindi mas malamig na siya, tataas ulit siya doon sa surface, i-absorb na yung init, dadalhin niya sa baba, and then the cycle goes on and on and on. So, nakatulong naman siya na ma-cool down yung iba. So, basically, that's how your geothermal heat pump works. So, basically, that's the difference between your uh, geothermal power plant and your geothermal heat pump. For geothermal power plant, you convert that uh, heat into electricity electrical energy, whereas for geothermal heat pump, you right away make use of that heat na nakukuha from the under. Okay? Okay, so so far, we were able to achieve the targets of this video. We were able to explain the advantages and disadvantages of volcanic eruptions. We were as well able to illustrate how the energy from volcanoes may be tapped for human use. Now, if there are still questions, parts which, which are not clear, pwedeng balikan yung mga sections na yung ating video. Kung hindi pa rin maintindihan, you can leave your questions in the comment section below. So hopefully, nakatulong ating video ngayon. Uh, maraming salamat sa inyong oras and see you on our next one. Goodbye!